Hello everybody, we are back for another live stream from UK Games Expo 2019. I am joined by Phil Collins from Board Game Create to find out what exactly it is his company does. So Phil, welcome to the stream, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much, it's good to be here. Right, uh, so, uh, Board Game Create, what is the concept? So we are uh, at our very heart a subscription box service, mm -hmm. um, but what we do is uh, we are very intelligent with the way we use data. Yes. So we will analyze all of our customers' board game collections mm -hmm. through either Board Game Geek or through our website, mm -hmm. and we will look at all of the data points behind every single game they've got. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the mechanics of each game, we're looking at the categories, we're looking at the complexity level, we're looking at the time to play and the number of players, and we basically bunch all of that data together. Mm -hmm. Um, we positively weight instances where customers have got expansions mm -hmm. because they're investing more into that particular game. Yep. We will positively weight games that are on people's wish lists mm -hmm. because those are games they are specifically wanting themselves. Of course. We will negatively weight games that are on people's previously owned games. Mm -hmm. So it's a game you've had but you've got rid of, so mm -hmm. it's not as important to you as the rest of the games in your collection. Mm -hmm. And we will negatively weight games that you have in your don't want list. Yes. So once we've got all of that data together, we can build up uh, a really detailed profile of each individual person and the games they enjoy playing. Yeah. Then we pull in the stock list from all of our suppliers mm -hmm. uh, and board game, uh, board game publishers mm -hmm. and developers, look at the games they've got that are available to us, and match games to individual customers that will fit within their collection and their preferences. Mm. Customers have the ability to say, I want games that feature within my top five categories and mechanics. Mm -hmm. I want games that have a medium or light complexity or a heavy complexity. Mm -hmm. I want games that will always work with two players, mm -hmm. or I want games that work with one player mm -hmm. as a solo mode. We tailor all of those preferences. Uh, we take in all of the stock lists that we've got. We bunch it all together, and our system, which we've called Dirk, um, basically gives us a list of suggestions of games that we need to talk to our suppliers about to bring in, mm -hmm. to put into one of our new crates, mm -hmm. and send them out. Okay, wow. So basically you are doing a deep dive on every possible facet of a gamer's likes and dislikes to give them essentially the perfect box every month. Absolutely. Okay, I have a question. Do you want Skynet? Because this is how you get Skynet. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is how you get Skynet right here. If it's Skynet <laughs> for board games, then I'm all in for it. So it, it basically started out, uh, my wife and I have always been board, big board game players. Yes. And we found we would turn up at our, our lo local bricks and mortar store, which is mm -hmm. Eclectic Games in Reading, and we would stand there in the shop with a game in each hand, mm -hmm. wondering which one to get. Yeah. We'd get advice from the owners, which was always you know, really, really great, and we'd go home with some great games, but we always felt that there's, there's got to be a better way of us doing this, mm -hmm. of not having to stand there and think which game do we like the look of. Mm -hmm. So we started to look at the data behind our own collections, mm -hmm. and that's when we started to look a bit more at the Board Game Geek data and mm -hmm. what we could get from them. We got in contact with them and said, look, can we commercially use your API? Mm -hmm. And they came back and said, uh, yes, you can. So we started to pull in all of that data and it gave us some, some, some good recommendations. And we thought, you know what, there's gotta be a way that we can share the knowledge here. Mm -hmm. How can we make use of this to every other gamer? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's the, the greatest problem that every gamer has. Mm -hmm. You know, Even at uh, a convention like this, you're walking around, you're seeing bright, wonderful, beautiful games. And at the end of it, I have seen myself do this. I will stand with like three games and going, I want at least one of these. Which one do I want to take home? Now, me being me, I generally take all three, but yeah. <laughs> we're not all like that. And we, <laughs> a lot of people don't like overloading their collection. That's very true. They're never going to get a chance to play. Yep. So having this kind of intelligent market selection for mm -hmm. you sounds incredibly good. I mean, like, uh, have you... Have you had ratings back from people saying, oh my God, this is the perfect game, I've wanted it for ages? Absolutely, more often than not, we hear back from our customers and they say, I was about to go and buy this game myself. Ah. I'm so glad it's turned up in a crate. Or this game has been on my wish list for so long, mm. uh, you know, it's arrived. So if we, can, if we can pick a game from a wish list first, mm -hmm. then we will do. Yeah. If not, then we fall back to letting our AI decide which games will fit within that collection best. Mm -hmm. This, this sounds very interesting, and it sounds very, very different to other sort of crate-based companies out yeah. there. You know, normally whenever I think of a crate-based company, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to pick a theme, something that mm -hmm. everybody's going to get, and you know, that's that's kind of a, a scattershot approach. Yep, absolutely. Some people will love it, some won't. This being so tailored, very cool idea, mm -hmm. and very, very, you know, I mean, like, I'm sure there has to be a cost effectiveness to this for folks who are doing it as well. Yep, so I mean, there, there are two rules that we live by every month and mm -hmm. they're programmed into our, into our system. First of all, 
Every game we send out has to have a Board Game Geek rating of 6.5 or higher. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it doesn't get near the crate. Yep. The second rule is that the retail value of those games combined mm -hmm. has to be worth more than the crate itself. Oh, wow. So you're getting great value games. Mm -hmm. You're getting really good games. Mm -hmm. Everyone says to us, well, how are you making money? Mm. Well, the way we do it is because we're placing that one big order every month with our suppliers yeah. across a whole range of games, it means that they can just load it onto a pallet all in yeah. one go and send it down to us. Yeah, so a lot of the, the costs are kept down for you guys. Yeah. And it's, it's nice to see that that's passing along to the end user. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, having the, the ethos that the, the end user is the person that you're wanting to have the best value out of it, mm -hmm. definitely a good strategy to have and definitely a good thing to do for everybody involved. Absolutely. Now, I am curious, what are some of the latest ones that have came out of the system for you guys? So very recently, in fact, just last month, mm -hmm. we sent out a whole batch of Tiny Towns games. Ah. The, so that matched with 12 of our subscribers. Uh -huh. um, and we were really, really lucky to get hold of it uh, as quickly as we did. Uh, well, if we lift this for a second, I can actually yeah. show everybody the, the box cover. So this is Tiny Towns. We've actually done some content on this recently where we did some play along videos. And from what I was hearing from the guys in the studio, they had a lot of fun with it's this. It's a great game. It's yeah. a great game. Uh, we also sent out last month Ganshon Clever. Uh, this one? Yep. Which is a great, uh, basically a roll and write game. Um, uh. Very, very tactical. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a game that my wife and I really enjoy playing as well. And that box lid happens to be upside down. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other one, a little while ago, was uh, Quacks of Quedlingburg. Which is again, it's a fantastic game. It's a it's a press your luck game. You're basically mixing ingredients uh, to create potions. You keep picking ingredients out of the bag until you reach so many of the of the white ingredient. At which point your uh, potion bowl blows up, <laughs> and uh, and and that's the end of your go. So we're picking uh, the latest games. We're picking great games. We're picking games that we know our customers love, mm -hmm. and we're picking games that we know we love as well. So we play test every single game we send out. Mm -hmm. All right, well, l l let's go through the process. Mm -hmm. Let's say I am a new user to your website. Yep. What is the process I go through to give your system the information it needs to pick these games for me? So if you have a Board Game Geek account, mm -hmm. you can give us your username, and we can connect straight into that. So mm -hmm. we can pull down all of the data that's in there. Mm -hmm. Or you can add your games collection through our website. Mm -hmm. We'll pull down the games you've got, mm -hmm. the games you don't want, mm -hmm. the games that are on your wish list. Mm -hmm. You can then go in back into our website and tailor your crate preferences. So you can tell us how closely we need to stick to your library mm -hmm. or how far away you want us to be from your collection. Ah. So you can say, you know what, disregard all my data, just surprise me. Just go wild. We still won't send you a game you've already got, yeah. but we won't look for games that match your specific collection. I see, and d is this just something that I can change at any point? So yep. my crate has arrived for this month, and next month I'm thinking, I want to get a little spicy. Let's, yep. let's just go wild for next month. Yeah, absolutely. You can change it as often as you like. Oh, wow. Th that's, that's really interesting. Because, I mean, like, if let's say I just I know my birthday is coming up. I know a lot of my stuff on my wish list, my family or my friends mm -hmm. are going to probably grab. It's nice to be able to go, OK, I know this might arrive here. So let's just let's just turn that off for this month. Yep. And let's see what else the, the AI is going to pop out at. Me. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell us which level of your wish list you want us to look at. So Board Game Geek, for example, has five levels of a wish list. Ah. So you've got must have. Uh, would like, like to have all the way down to zero, which is I don't want. Mm. So you can tailor how deep we go to your wish list. Mm -hmm. You can also tailor the complexity of the games we send you. Mm -hmm. So we might indicate to you that actually you like medium light games, mm -hmm. but maybe that's just because that's the number of games you've got that fit within that category, but yeah, actually yeah. you prefer heavier games. Yeah, yeah. So you can say to us, well, look, send me heavier games that still match yeah, yeah. the categories of mechanics that I like. Yeah. If you play as a party, you mm -hmm. can tell us that you want games that support a specific number of players. Mm -hmm. Or if you like to play games by yourself, so for example, you like the Friday, the mm -hmm. Robinson Crusoe Friday, um, you can say, I like games that will play as a one player. It's interesting. Uh, now, let's say I'm a pub game player, mm -hmm. or I'm someone who's very much uh, me and the missus. Yep. Just, we just want to sit down and have a good two player experience mm -hmm. every single time a crate comes in. Can I set that? Yeah, absolutely. You can tell us that every game has to support two players, mm -hmm. and we will only ever send you games that will either out of the box support two players mm -hmm. or there is a, uh, a, a, pre uh, a variant that will support two players. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be a variant that's supported by the publisher. Ah, 
Ah, I see. All right, here's the next question then. So, uh, whenever I subscribe, mm -hmm. uh, do I have options for one month, two month, three month, or is it just a rolling subscription? Do Absolutely. I set my mind? Yep, so we've got lots of various options. You can start right at the very beginning with just a one off crate. Mm -hmm. Follows exactly the same process of everything else. Mm -hmm. You can have a recurring subscription. Mm -hmm. You could have a subscription that comes to you every other month, mm -hmm. or a subscription that comes to you once a quarter. Ah. Or you can buy three months up front, mm -hmm. which then works out a little bit cheaper, or six or 12. Just depends how much time you've got for board gaming. Ah, I see. All right, well, let's, let's, say I, let's say I have a friend. I know what's in their collection. Mm -hmm. Could I go in, add it up, and actually do a gift crate? Yeah, absolutely. You could go in and buy a gift voucher. Mm -hmm. So we give you a code. Uh, and we give you a PDF. Mm -hmm. So if you're remote, you can simply print out that PDF mm -hmm. and hand it to the person, and they go to our website, they redeem it, they get exactly the same subscription process. Wow, this, this, I have never seen anyone go so in depth for this style of sort of subscription, you know, buying your board games in. This is incredible. Now, uh, you have a space in the hall, yes? We do indeed. We're in Hall 1. We're at Stand 305. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, very large board game crate logo just hanging <laughs> above us, so you can't miss us. We're very purple. Well, nothing wrong with that. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. You've you got to be flashy. You've got to stand out yeah. at a con like this. You Absolutely. Know, the number of bright yellow t-shirts I've seen this weekend, you would not believe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I have to say, it has been absolutely wonderful chatting to you. Is there anything we've missed here? Uh, the only thing I would probably add is that if you go to Instagram mm -hmm. and look for hashtag board game crate, what mm -hmm. we do is we try and suggest to all of our customers that they take a picture of their crate as it arrives mm -hmm. with the games that are in it mm -hmm. so that people can see what everyone is getting. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we're not you know, hiding away specific crates, that mm -hmm. we're only showing the best of it. We encourage our customers to take a picture and put it straight up into social media. Wow. Well, everybody, I tell you what, this is definitely one to check out and talk to the guys at Board Game Create if you're coming to UK Games Expo this weekend. And if they want to find you online, what's the web address? It's boardgamecrate.co.uk. All right, well, everybody, I tell you what, uh, we lend this one here. Get your comments in below what you think of it. Don't forget, we do have a fantastic Monster Apocalypse prize in this post, so get those comments in for that as well. But this has sounded great. I absolutely loved it. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very I'm much. I'm going to have a look at this whenever I'm done, although I dread cataloging my board game collection because <laughs> I have so much. We'll move on. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>